Good morning and welcome everyone. Uh, today is a sad day and an exciting day all in one. As you guys all know, I'm a big Ohio State Buckeye fan. It's a sad day. They had every opportunity to win the game and they didn't. This is how sports goes at times. But it's an exciting day because we have the family for Brooklyn Zimmerman here and the baptism, uh, God working his amazing grace through his means, uh, through the waters of baptism today. And we get to gather in his house and uh, celebrate all the various ways that he touches us. We continue with our invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, to call upon him in prayer and praise, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you and for his sake, forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, our Maker and Redeemer, you wonderfully created us, and in the incarnation of your Son, you more wondrously restored our human nature. Grant that we may ever be alive in him who made himself to be like us through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning. Our Old Testament reading comes from Isaiah chapter 63. I will recount the steadfast love of the Lord, the praises of the Lord, according to all that the Lord has granted us, and the great goodness to the house of Israel that he has granted them according to his compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he said, surely they are my people, children who will not deal falsely. And he became their savior. In all their affliction, he was afflicted, and the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them. He lifted them up and carried them all the days of old. But they rebelled and grieved his Holy Spirit. Therefore he turned to be their enemy and himself fought against them. Then he re remembered the days of old, of Moses and his people. Where is he who brought them up out of the sea with the shepherds of his flock? Where is he who put them in the midst of them, his Holy Spirit, who caused his glorious arm to go at the right hand of Moses, who divided the waters before them to make for himself an everlasting name, who led them through the depths? Like a horse in the desert, they did not stumble. Like livestock that go down into the valley, the Spirit of the Lord gave them rest." So you led your people to make for yourself a glorious name. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. 
Our epistle is from Galatians chapter 4. When the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his Son, born of woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son, and if a son, then an heir through God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us all rise for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When the wise men had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, rise, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. And he rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed to Egypt and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet, out of Egypt I called my son. Then Herod, when he saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, became furious, and he sent and killed all the male children in Bethlehem and in all that region who were two years old or under, according to the time that he had ascertained from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what was spoken by the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, weeping and loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be comforted because they are no more. But when Herod died, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Rise, take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel, for those who sought the child's life are dead. And he rose and he took the child and his mother and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning over Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And being warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee. And he went and lived in a city called Nazareth, that what was spoken by the prophets might be fulfilled. He shall be called a Nazarene. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Be seated, please. And I invite uh, children that we have with us today to come up for the children's message. Now, you guys got to see a baptism here. We, we do baptisms uh, somewhat uh, frequently here. So this probably isn't the first one that you've seen. I want to show you something that we will give to everybody that is baptized. It's called a baptismal candle. And odds are, each of you have one of these at home. Now, if you don't know whether you have one, you need to talk to mom or dad because they have one. They were given one because, let's see, you were baptized here, you were, bapti- you were, all, you were all baptized here. I think I did your baptism. I did. She's like, I don't remember. Yeah, I wouldn't expect you to remember. You'd be kind of little when it happened. Well, a baptismal candle helps us to celebrate a baptism, but also we use it as a remembrance. You see, sometimes what people will do is pull it out on their baptismal anniversary. It's like your baptismal birthday. And then they light it and say a prayer in remembrance of their baptism. Well, it's a good practice for us to remember something that's God, that God has done for us in the past. Now, Harrison, you're in confirmation class, so, uh, and, and we've been covering baptism, so you should be able to answer this question for me if, if they can't. What is it that God does for you in the waters of baptism? Baptism. 
He makes you his child. That is one of the things that he does. Very good. You were paying attention. There's a couple of other things that he does besides make you his child. Can anybody tell me what another thing is that he does? Well, not, what, what is something that he does for you? Not, not something that... He saves you from your sins. Absolutely. He washes you clean. It is a good thing for us to remember what God has done for us. Because in our life, well, we do things at times that we shouldn't do. Right? We sin. And we have this wonderful opportunity that at any time... We can confess our sins, and it's just like returning to baptism, and God will wash us clean and forgive us again. Hmm. I'll talk about that a little bit more in the sermon. So, remembering our baptism today. So, let's fold our hands. Let's bow our heads. Gracious Heavenly Father, this wonderful gift of baptism all began in Jesus Christ. In his birth, he took on our flesh to live with us, and when the time was right, he gathered with John the Baptist and he was baptized to make our baptisms have power and meaning. Lead us, Lord, each and every day to remember this great blessing that he has given to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much. You guys can return to your seats. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, have you ever heard of something called a praise sandwich? And if you have, great. I'm going to tell you what it is anyway. If you haven't, well, here is the purpose of a praise sandwich, first of all. It's a technique that is used to offer criticism that's intended to soften the blow. So it's a way that you can say things without being too blunt. It's done by beginning with something positive, then you insert your critique, and then you follow it up with something positive. So for example, if I wanted to, uh, to tell somebody, that um, who has done some raking of leaves, that how they might be able to do a better job, first of all, I'd begin with, thank you for volunteering to rake my leaves. This would be a good thing to begin with. Then give them the instruction that I would prefer them to do, and then, of course, follow it up with, and I really appreciate your help in finishing the project. Right? That's the idea of a praise sandwich. We see something like that in our Isaiah reading today. Isaiah chapter 63, you see this praise sandwich going on where Isaiah is talking about all of the great things that God has done. Reminds the people about God's faithfulness. But then it turns to Israel's rebellion, Israel's sin but then concludes it with this remembrance that God is faithful and he will be with us into the future and he is going to do things in the future like what he has done in the past. It's a good thing for us to remember this type of process. Now, the subject that they focused upon, Isaiah, was Moses and the exodus from Egypt and the Red Sea. Now, you guys all remember that story, right? The movie, The Ten Commandments, with uh, uh, Yul Brenner and, you know, all of that stuff where uh, Moses raises his hands up and with a staff in his hands, and the miraculous thing happens, the Red Sea parts, and the people can go through on dry ground. In the Christian faith today, we view that like baptism. Matter of fact, in the New Testament, it actually says that. That baptism is like what God did through Moses in taking the Israelites out of Egypt into the promised land. Takes us 
from the time of struggle, the time of difficulty, and takes us through the water so we come out on the other side new and different. This is a good thing. So this is a process that is good for us to remember in our life today. And Isaiah used this as a way to talk about, well, sin and struggle that we have. We all have it, whether we like it or not. Now, it's good for us to have our attention during this Christmas season go toward Jesus, the one who would bear our sin. Now, as I mentioned earlier, that Moses raised his hands up with the staff and the seas parted. Well, Jesus raised his hands for us as well. It's on the cross, he raised his hands and he opened the way to eternal life in heaven. That is a wonderful gift that we cherish every day. We should never forget that we should remember no matter what we are experiencing in life. You see, everything that is his becomes ours. In the waters of baptism, all that is his gets placed onto us. As one of the children up here said, that we become a child of God. We are saved from our sins, as another one said. So becoming a child of God, everything that is his becomes ours. It is a beautiful gift that we are being made into children of God through the steadfast love of Jesus Christ. It's a gift for us to remember every day. Now, and there's this thing of unfortunate news that gets sandwiched in here. You know, the Israelites, when they got into the promised land, they didn't always live as they were supposed to. They didn't live always with thankfulness and praise to God for this wonderful gift. And they became grumbly, complainy, self-centered people. Do you guys ever get grumbly and complainy? And if you don't, I'm going, I'm not sure I believe you. Because things happen in life that really weigh us down and our human instinct is to grumble and complain. I've got to tell you a little bit of the story of my recent Christmas travels. Now, those of you that are members of St. Mark, you, you know this kind of uh, practice that my wife and I have. So all of you that are, are not members, uh, with St. Mark, here's kind of the normal routine. I'm originally from Ohio, so, uh, hence the Ohio State Buckeye fan, right? Uh, so most of our family's all in Ohio. So if we can, possibly, Christmas Day after worship service, we head to our son's house in Cleveland, and then uh, if we have adequate time, we proceed on to where my wife's family is at, which is more uh, toward Columbus, not in Columbus, it's Bell Fountain, but nobody knows where Bell Fountain is. And technically it's Russellvania, and good luck hunting that one up. And my family is in Lima, Ohio. So we go on this uh, little bit of a journey of the state of Ohio. Well, the adventures this year, uh, at least we had good weather. Do you guys remember last year, Erie, Pennsylvania got 55 inches of snow on Christmas Day? Guess who drove through that? You would think I would be smart enough to not plan doing this trip, right? But how often do you want to see family, right? Seeing family is important. So this year... We go to Ben's house, uh, our son, and everything works out very nicely. We proceed to go down to Columbus. We're going to meet my wife's family for a concert at Nationwide Arena in Columbus. You guys ever seen the Trans-Siberian Orchestra? Fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. Well, there was a little catch. Our seats were kind of up in the nosebleed section. And those seats get really close together. I had a knee injury back in September, and I wear a brace on my, my left knee now all the time to prevent it from bending too far. 
to get my foot to sit on the floor, I had to bend it. I had to push my leg back underneath the seat. How comfortable do you suppose I was? Guess how long it took me to start grumbling? Not very. Fortunately, we were able to move down a couple of seats, had more leg room, wonderful concert, absolutely loved it. Now, just in case you think, well, that's not so bad. All right, so we stay in a hotel in Dublin that night, get woken up at 4 o'clock in the morning because there's a fight going on in the parking lot of the hotel outside of my window. Call the desk. They get the police there. Guess who's having to file a police report as a witness at 4.30 in the morning? Not a happy camper. Now, oh, I skipped a piece. After the concert, my wife's family and us, we went out for dinner, place that normally everything works nice. We place our order for our food. It takes them a half an hour to get the salads to the table. It took them another half an hour, oh, and we had to ask for them to bring them to the table. Another half an hour later, so we're an hour after we place the order for our food, we're like, wait a minute, that table came in after us. They've already gotten there. Where's our food? Took an hour to get the food. Uh, so then we have the incident at the hotel. This should be the end of the problems, right? Next day, drive to Lima, meet my parents for lunch. We're sitting there having a nice meal. Waitress comes by with a platter full of uh, drinks, trips, dumps the thing on my wife's lap. You would think they would be extremely attentive. We had to ask them for rags to be able to clean it up. It's just the most bizarre thing. Now, you would think this should be the end, right? So we proceed to see my parents and aunt and uncle and our son that lives in Lima uh, because I need to get back for uh, worship. Uh, we have a Saturday service. So we proceed partway back on, on Friday and stay in a hotel overnight. We wake up Saturday morning. Um, you know, many hotels, you have two beds in the, in the room. We look over at the other bed and we see a bug crawling on one of the pillows. Yeah. Do you suppose I might have been just a little irritated? And I'm thinking, and I'm going to preach on this? <laughs> oh. But see, in the midst of this, here's a couple of questions for you to consider. Where is God in your life? No matter how difficult your schedule is, where is God in the midst of your schedule? Where is God in the midst of your priorities in life? And then think about this one. When a person looks at your life, can they tell that you are a baptized child of God? That's an important one. When people look at your life, can they tell that you are a baptized child of God? It certainly gives a lot of food for thought. And as you have trials and tribulations that come your way, and hopefully you don't have any trips like mine, uh, and hopefully I don't have another trip like that, it makes one pause and think about how do you respond in each of those? I had multiple different situations to deal with. The beauty of being a Christian is that you know that God loves you with an amazing love that's displayed in Jesus Christ. No matter what you go, no matter, no matter where you go, no matter where you, your adventures take you, no matter what people you encounter, you've got the love of God in Jesus Christ there with you. 
There is nothing that is greater than the love and the mercy of Jesus. And he is continually calling on us to reflect on our lives. Yes, it is true we will find sin and we will find failings. And he invites us to repent of our sins, to receive the promise of forgiveness. He cleans us up, he washes us off, and he puts us back onto that path so that we can continue. If we can carry his love with us, we can have an impact upon other people in their lives. Now, sometimes people get the idea that God owes them forgiveness. You know, the forgiveness of God isn't something that he owes anyone. The forgiveness of God is more about his character and his name. The beautiful name of Jesus is all about loving, forgiving, and saving sinful people. Think about what the name itself means, Jesus. He who saves. It's what he does. It's who he is. God knows what he has done in the past. He never forgets. We don't need to remind him. But sometimes we need a reminder, don't we? We need a reminder of how great our God is. We need a reminder that we indeed fall short of the glory of God. That can lead us to despair, but it really doesn't need to. Sometimes we struggle as a result of what others have done, and sometimes others struggle as a result of what we have done. Christmas is this beautiful time of the year when we are reminded of the love of God. We are reminded of what God has done to show and to tell of his love. He has given us a great way to personally apply that love to each person in the waters of baptism. And we can give praise to the Lord every day for his love and mercy. This is even true in dealing with our sin. For that fact, Jesus Christ covers our sin. And think of it as a praise sandwich. It begins with God's goodness, and it is covered in God's compassion. And it is surrounded in the steadfast love of Jesus Christ. Can't get much better than that, can you? So how many of you want to go on my next trip with me? Anybody? It, it could be a good one. I'm going down to Nashville and then on down to the Panhandle in February. Anybody ready to drive through a snowstorm? Yeah, leave it to me. Crazy, right? God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace of God which transcends all understanding keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful Father, through holy baptism you called each of us to be your own children. Grant that our lives may be evidence of the working of your Holy Spirit in love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, according to the image of your only begotten Son. We give you thanks that in holy baptism we receive the forgiveness of sins, deliverance from death and the devil, and eternal salvation. Help us, Lord, to value this gift each, each day of our lives. Help us, Lord, to focus upon your word and be filled with your Holy Spirit. Lead us and guide us to be able to share your love with our neighbor. Where there is opportunity that we can provide support and encouragement even in the midst of great trials and challenges. Lord, we lift up to you those that we have on our health concern list today. We pray all of this and whatever else is on our hearts this day as we pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.